laid it down, and in the middle of combat, it's just buzzy, and you can't really figure out what's going on. And the other thing about it was uh, we weren't too crazy about the totem thematic. We, weren't felt, we didn't feel that that really drived or it was really driving the Witch Doctor uh, dark theme home. So um, we made some changes to it. We've renamed it Carrion Spiders. Uh, and the other thing is we said, well, if a lot of little spiders is cool but can't read really well, then we'll switch that around and we'll make it fewer spiders, but we'll make them huge. Uh, and huge spiders are definitely creepy. Uh, and then instead of a totem, we decided to aim squarely for the zombie thematic and, and have those spiders actually get emitted from a zombie corpse that you raise from the floor. Next up in the Mikuru department is the wizard. So last year we showed you stone skin, which is a defensive ability. Uh, this worked really well, but it was really difficult to read. Uh, she's a kind of a spindly shape. Uh, shaped character and there wasn't enough surface area to really get the idea what she was made out of when she switched. Um, so the other big problem with it though, the one that the artist really had was it didn't really underscore our goal of making the wizard a light show. So here we have the new stone skin look and we aim for a bright crystalline kind of feel, uh, something that would glow and light up and something that you just couldn't possibly miss. So it's got a much easier read, and now that we've seen it like this and we like it, uh, we're thinking it's probably gonna need a new name, which we haven't thought of yet. So under the Barbarian, um, got a, done a lot of upgrades to Whirlwind along the way. <laughs> That's a good screensaver. So um, we, uh, we showed you Whirlwind originally at uh, WWI in Paris when we announced, and this is what it looked like. And we thought we were pretty happy with it at that time. We thought, okay, oh, yeah, that looks like a Whirlwind. It's cool, yeah, you know. Um, but then what happened along the way um, this year was we started working on a new, new monster called the Dune Dervish, which is a desert monster, and he also has a different kind of whirlwind attack, but a whirlwind attack nonetheless. And it looks like this. And the problem that we had with this was when we like, unleashed this onto the team, uh, the comment that was made was, um, how come the Dune Dervish whirlwind is better than the Barbarian? Uh, and this kind of thing happens a lot, where one thing comes into the game and kind of one-ups the thing that we just made. So we were like, uh, the effects artists were you know, a little hurt by that. And we went back to the drawing board and we decided, well, all right, we, it's a fair comment. Let's, let's do something about this. And uh, so here's the new version of Whirlwind. It's a lot thicker. There's a lot more going on. We've added actually more copies of the Barbarian in there. Lots of different like flying weapons. Uh, and a whole lot of more dust. So, Now, that may not be impressive enough, so I prepared a little demonstration to prove just how much more powerful the new whirlwind actually is. Yes, you can decimate farm animals with it. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the monsters that we developed uh, in the last year and for our BlizzCon demo. This is just kind of a nice, cool little montage that shows off some of the uh, different creatures that you'll encounter if you go and play uh, what we're showing today. So, um, so I'm going to talk about our monster design philosophy and how we design monsters for Diablo. So. The first thing um, that we kind of learned in the development of Diablo monsters is that they work best when they're simple. Um, most of our monsters live for three, maybe five seconds. Um, and when you put kind of crazy group behavior AI or squad level stuff or give a guy five skills, um, likely the player's only going to see a piece of that before the creature dies. And it actually just makes the creature look kind of confused and, and weird. It, it doesn't really work. So the monsters actually tend to work best when we make them kind of straightforward and simple, give them one job and have them do that job well. So the question is, how do we create um, combat that's got a lot of depth out of um, just these very simple monsters? And the answer is complexity and depth 
comes from combining different monster types together. And this is really the philosophy that all the Diablo games have followed and that we've just kind of taken up um, and inherited from our, our previous titles. So one of the key things here is this means we put a lot of different monsters on screen. We put three, four, five different monster types on screen at once. And sometimes knowing which monster is which and which one you want to kill first is really critical gameplay. We call it target identification. It's absolutely you know, essential. So identifying monsters quickly is very important. Um, and then we have this idea that you should always be introducing new monsters. Uh, Diablo monsters work best when they're simple. That means that if you fight the same monster over and over again for a couple hours, he can get a little dull. So always be introducing something new that is interesting for the player. So this is a good example of um, looking, harking back to Diablo 2, um, how they use shape and color for target identification. Diablo 2 did, and, and the original Diablo did an amazing job of creating a lot of different profiles. And every area you go into, the monsters in those areas have different shapes and different colors that are very complementary to one another. And then here's some examples of some creatures from Diablo 3 that appear in the same area and how we use the same ideas of shape, pro profile, and color so that you can easily identify them from one, from one another. All right, now that uh, we've heard how we create monsters or the process we use, let's talk about specific monsters. Uh, the Sand Wasp is a natural creature. It's not demonic. It's, uh, we wanted to showcase it because it's, it's interesting in that it kind of shows that the world of Sanctuary or the world of Diablo is a very dangerous place on its own. It doesn't need demons to kill you. It is, plays a support role. Um, this is a swarming creature um, like Jay and Wyatt were talking about. This is a creature that um, is not very tough on its own. It's very much uh, used in conjunction with other creatures. If you find this creature by itself, you just kill it. Um, it's not really a problem, but when you get a bunch of them together, you get what we call the bullet hell effect, which is a, wall, a slow moving wall of damage or death. Um, it's very hard to deal with. Um, they're also very handy or very um, deadly when they're supporting any other creatures, you know, because they're just throwing these flying barbs at you while you're trying to fight some other melee creature or something. Um, do you want me to just control it? Or? Yeah. And now Julian's going to talk about how he did the effects. Uh, so, yeah, we, uh, we really wanted to support where design was coming from in terms of... Uh, this bullet hell idea. So we started by, just with the rapid fire attack idea, we started with a whole lot of different kinds of projectiles. And, uh, and none of them really kind of stuck for one reason or another. Uh, and then we, then we got this idea, well, where, you know, where does this skill really come from? And, and the, th the other thing it's really trying to evoke is this old timey arcade action idea. And, and so we hit on this idea, well, what if the sand wasp actually birthed other little mini wasps that flew at you? Uh, that would be really cool, and it would really support where we're coming from. And of course, we got that into the game, and I, the team didn't quite understand where we were coming from. So I was like, well, you know, how can we communicate, even to the rest of the team, exactly what we're trying to get across and why this is such a cool thing? So we came up with this. The best way to do this is with graphics. So I came up with this little demonstration, again, uh, on, that says everything, I think. So here's your player, and you can get used to the controls first. <laughs> and you just need something to attack. <laughs> 